Welcome to the Next Generation Rockstars podcast. If you are trying to figure out how do you recruit and retain this next generation of rock star talent, well, you are in the right place. Hey, this is Amanda Hammett with the Next Generation Rockstars, and today we have Ben Wright with Velocity Global. Ben, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Amanda. Oh, no problems. No problems. So you were actually a guest on my husband's show. My husband's show is Leaders in the Trenches, and he really digs in and studies the Inc. 5000. And mm -hmm. after he interviewed you, he was like, he needs to be on your show. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you, Ben. A little bit about me. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'll try to keep it to a little bit. Um, Founder CEO of a company called Velocity Global. We're headquartered based in, in Denver, Colorado. Um, blessed to have a chance to, to be on your husband's show, Leader in the Trenches, because we we built a company that, that's grown really, really quickly. Um, we ended up number four on the Inc. 5000 last year, which is, is pretty amazing. Um, still kind of have to pinch myself every time I say that, uh, but we've got a really incredible team. Um, Husband, uh, father of two kids, 10 and 7, um, and I don't know what else to tell you. That, 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 that occupies just about all of my time. <laughs> well, that's a lot. I mean, just being a CEO and a founder is a lot, but a CEO and a founder who grew 39,000% or over 39,000% in three years, that's, a full, that's more than a full-time job. So congratulations to I'm busy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So wonderful, wonderful. So a couple of things that I, I wanted to dig in and get to know about you is that you guys, in order to grow that fast, you've really got to feed a machine, but you've got to have a machine that is made up of phenomenal people. So where do you find these phenomenal people and how do you get them in there to Velocity Global? Yeah, great question. Um, any organization that kind of has grown as we have has to feed that machine with people. We are a technology enabled service business. And so that's particularly the case with us. Um, we're not just a, a dyed in the wool technology solution that has this incredible scale where you achieve a certain size and then you know, you can grow, 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 grow without having to add as many people to the organization. Um, and so human capital is big for us. And so getting, uh, feeding the machine with candidates and the right people uh, and getting the right people on the bus is, is huge, particularly for an organization like us. Um, and we've, you know, we've taken the approach since day one of the organization. Uh, literally the very first person I hired, who is now my COO, a guy by the name of Rob Crabtree, took the approach from day one is that, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we get the very best people into this organization. And every company can say that, but we took the mantra is that we only want to have tens. Um, and so if, if we are out there and interviewing and talking to people, typically the last question we ask ourselves is, you know, is this individual a 10? Uh, and if not, despite how much we like them, uh, we'll take a pass and we'll wait until we kind of find that, that, that great 10 who comes in. Um, we have passed on people who honestly and objectively are, are probably 10s, but may not actually be 10s in, in our system as well. Yeah, and so there's, there's multiple angles to it. Um, and, and frankly, I think for us, it as odd as it may sound, it doesn't have all that much to do with your, the very specific details of your professional experience yeah. uh, in terms of kind of the exact roles that you've served or, or kind of the accomplishments along the way. It, it's more sort of about who you are as a person, um, your ability to learn, your ability to uh, analyze information, to assimilate information, to really be a team player. Um, and kind of have a sense of where you want to go in life, that's all been a, a pretty good, pretty good gumbo for us. 
a pretty good combo. Okay. I love that. <laughs> Wonderful. So when you're putting people through this process, uh, you, you mentioned it, it's not all about what's on the resume, which I think is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's really more about culture versus specific skill. Um, so are you guys relying more on the, the softer skills or those abilities or how do you judge those softer skills? Let's start with that. Yeah, great question. Uh, so, so we've got a we've got a whole process that we put people through, um, and it's interesting. I was I was happened to be on kind of Glassdoor the other day and uh, noticed that a few folks have kind of interviewed and apply with us and uh, didn't get past kind of that first phone screen and couldn't figure out why the heck we weren't talking about their resume. Um, and I kind of got a chuckle out of it because that's that's on purpose. <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry to those folks who applied and didn't get past that, that first round. But we um, we really start out talking about, uh, you know, what makes you passionate? Um, what are the things that you, you are most proud of? You know, what are some low points kind of throughout your career? Um, and really kind of understanding and painting a picture of, almost kind of what it means in a quick 30 minute conversation about, about what it is to be you in a professional setting. Um, and that's where, it, that's where you either, you're either on to the next round or you're not. Uh, beyond then, in future rounds, we do actually start going into kind of the different roles that you've had kind of over your career. But honestly, we, we don't focus as much about really the blocking and tackling of, of what each individual position entails. It's more about what did you learn? Uh, how did you work with other people? Uh, you know, how, how did you work with your boss? How were you as a manager? How were you as a peer? Um, when you were in those positions, you know, what did you gain the most satisfaction out of? And, and, and how does it all kind of weave a tapestry into, into what it is that you're going to do next and what makes you most passionate? And the perfect situation is, is we have incredibly passionate, incredibly intelligent people um, who may not be able to articulate perfectly, but together we can come up with kind of this is this is really what this next step looks like for you. And when that fits in to what we need as an organization, it's it's magic. That's that's wonderful. I, I love to hear things like that. I love to hear when when people bring that whole recruiting process in and make it magic. That's that's amazing. So um, what about when people are in the recruiting process or in the interviewing process and you're asking them these questions, yep. are you relying, and I hate to say this, but are you relying on exactly taking their word for it or, or how are you backing this information up? Let me, let me go about it that way. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I, we, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give us too much credit in this whole case. I, I, I think there's, there's a lot of people who do some really great things around their three interview process. And I, and I don't think that we are just completely, you know, off the grid genius in terms of what we do, but we do have a process that is really good about getting down to, okay, this is what you told me, but, 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 he, but, but, digging deeper, digging deeper, digging deeper, and then repetition, 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 mm -hmm. right? Um, I am a firm believer um, that we can and should learn as we go through our careers, right? Um, and the times that are the challenging times, I mean, the great times, those are fantastic, and that's what we always want to talk about in the interview. Those are easy. Those are the easy Those are easy. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> But it's the, you know, it's the tough ones where we, we literally learn the most. And, and that's where you understand someone's character. That's where you understand their mettle. And most importantly, that's where you understand that not only how did they overcome, but what did you then take that to the next, you know, how, how did you take that to the next position in the next company, right? And what are the learnings that you did from there? And my goodness, if you continue to kind of make those kind of same issues and same errors and same mistakes, um, I, I hope that you learn uh, at some point, but you're probably not going to be a good fit here, uh, right? <laughs> and come back when you you, you kind of have that that ability to be able to uh, to kind of incorporate that information. And then, so so all of that kind of paints that whole picture. One of the final steps is absolutely talking to references and talking to people um, who you've worked with in the past. And it's yes, it's validating the job and the job description and the job requirements, but it's more so validating 
here's what here's the picture that we think we've kind of painted about this individual and you know are we right or are we wrong it help keep us honest on this thing that's really i i i love that you put that kind of care and effort into it um it, it seems like and i could be wrong but it seems like you guys really take your time through the hiring process you slow it down um and we do <laughs> yeah we do i was just see you so you saw me there so yes, we are very, the way I describe it is we are incredibly purposeful and fastidious, but we also move fast. So, uh, you know, we, we, we named ourselves Velocity Global for a reason. We move fast in just about everything that we do, uh, but we are uncertain that we're kind of purposeful and, and, and taking the right amount of time kind of through that process. I love that. Well, fantastic. All right. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, so I know that this is not, this is your first round as a founder and you blew it out of the water. Right. So congratulations on that. But Thank before you. that, you, you have various other roles working for other companies. Um, and I would imagine that you have experienced other forms of leadership. And how did those shape who you became as a leader? Yeah, I often tell the story, and, and I, I, I don't even know, I'd have to actually go back and do the math again, because there's so many. Um, so take this with a grain of salt, but I think over the first 10 years of my career, I worked for seven different companies. Okay. Um, some of that was my of my own decision and own making. Some of it was, you know, market forces, like the company was bought out. Right. I was fired a couple of times, so that was not my choice. Uh, nice. You know, so therefore. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I honestly probably deserved it in both cases. So, but the, what, where do you learn, right? What do you learn? Exactly. You learn something, apparently. You do. You try to. You hope you do. Um, but I. I I only raised that because, you know, seven different companies over the first 10 years, I had lots of different managers, lots of different cultures, and it's not how I would have scripted my career by any means. Right. Uh, I would have scripted it really, really differently. But the silver lining is, it, it honestly gave me, you know, experience after experience after experience, and I was able to kind of look and, and review and absorb and say, here's the cultures, here's the, the themes, here's the personalities, uh, here's the direction, here's the strategy that I love, and here's the ones that I, that, that I really don't care for uh, and, and don't make sense to me. And honestly, in my opinion, haven't necessarily led to success in those organizations, right? These things have held those companies back. These things have really let those companies shine and grow. And so I really sort of took that collection of experience, um, you know, not just in terms of cultures of organizations, but, but leaders themselves. Um, and there's, you know, uh, of the, of this, the seven different companies over the first 10 years, probably 10 or more, you know, bosses or leaders that I worked for in that time, you know, there's, there's probably two or three that really stand out, uh, as amazing. Um, there's four or five that were pretty middle of the road as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, there's a couple that I, I hope they, they really continue to grow and evolve as leaders and managers. Um, so. <laughs> that was a very polite way to say that. <laughs> I <applaud> you. <laughs> because I'm certain there's, you know, there's probably somebody out there maybe saying the same thing about me. And so I'm just hoping they would say, that, you know, again, offer me that, that same grace. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, um, so I am a, an expert on developing next generation talent. And, and I noticed just going through your website that you have quite the population of Millennials, do you have any Gen Zs yet on, on your staff, on your team? What, uh, what, what age is Gen Z? What's the oldest Gen so Z? So Gen Z would just be starting to graduate from college, so the oldest would be around 22, 23. So we do. So we do. We have, uh, I, I couldn't tell you how many, but we have a handful of folks who are uh, kind of just out of university um, and a handful of folks who are, who are interns with us who are still at the university level. So, so yes, we're starting to get into that Gen Z, but we do have quite a few, quite a few millennials. What, how, what would you say the makeup is of millennials versus everyone else? Uh, I haven't looked, but my gut says on the average age in our organization is somewhere between 28 and 30. Okay. So um, not Guy like me that's at 42 is really dragging that mean up quite a bit. Um, and there's a few of us there that are, you know, again, really kind of dragging that, dragging that number up. 
um, for better or for worse. I don't know if I like the fact that I do that, but it's just simply the fact. Um, so, you know, quite a bit. I, I, I would say that the majority of our, uh, of our team, of our population is probably in that millennial group. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I would imagine in, in such a fast growth arena, you guys really do need to rely on that millennial talent in particular. Um, I mean, across the world, globally, it's going to be 75% by the year 2020 or 2025, excuse me. Wow. Um, but I'm, wow. I'm glad to see that you guys have already reached that. A lot of the people I work with are already at 90%. So I'm not surprised by that at all. Not at all. So, um, all right. What, what do you think is the difference in the workplace or in the culture of a workplace now versus maybe when you first came in? Because you're, you're a little, not much, but a little tiny outside of that, that millennial <laughs> age range. I mean, just a little. Like, See, that's the grace that I was talking about. That's really nice. No, I'm, really I'm nice actually story. being serious. <laughs> just barely out, so. <laughs> and it's, it's a, it, you know, it's more of a flow thing versus a, hard date so what yeah is fair. um well listen when i started my career we were in cubicles <laughs> right um i mean that in and of itself is is out the door um you know with us at velocity global we not only have a completely open office environment nobody has an nobody has an assigned desk um and and, and that includes myself I, I don't have an office i don't have an assigned desk you know we float um, and it is totally wide open and there's, you know, there's space where you can sit at a desk, there's space where you can sit in couches, you can sit in kind of huddle rooms, you know, it, it's this incredible use of space, which was so sterile when, when I came out and frankly, I, you know, I hated it, right? I'd go sit in my cubicle and it didn't matter how high the walls were and it felt like they were always ridiculously high. You know, you had to poke your head around just to talk to somebody and, and they're giving you this look like, why are you poking your head around the cubicle to talk to me? um you know the collaboration and the 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 relationships and the bonds kind of of this uh, you know millennial generation is is incredible and it's so powerful and, and and i think it's an incredible boon to business because people care about each other they know each other at a much deeper level than i feel like like i did with my colleagues when i started my career um and that leads to a, a really a much richer tapestry that allows you to kind of get stuff done uh, in a way you've never been able to do. Um, you know, and it's funny and it's ironic because we always read this stuff, you know, in the, the internet generation and, and phones and social media and, and, and none of these millennials are going to be able to talk to each other. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It's wrong, right? It's absolutely wrong. They, they are, they have deeper relationships and they communicate at, at a, at a much deeper level than, you know, than I was ever able to do kind of early in my career. Wow. I, that's a, that's quite an accolade that you just threw out. So I appreciate that. That's wonderful. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about developing your, your employees, because as we mentioned, a lot of these are on the younger side. You've got some interns, you've got fresh out of university all the way up to, you know, late thirties, early forties. Um, what does the development path look like for you guys? Is there a set in stone? Everybody goes through this or is it more individual? How do you guys go about that? Yeah, it's individual. Um, it's very much individual. Um, so what we do at Velocity Global is we have this thing called an Employee Development Plan, EDP. Uh -huh. um, and while not required, we strongly encourage everybody to go through the process. And it's simple and it's a one page and it's, you know, what are my goals? Um, and we encourage people to not think about it from a Velocity Global perspective. Think about it in terms of a, a personal and professional perspective and almost kind of take the Velocity Global thing out of the equation. What do I care about? What do I want to do? Short term, medium term, and long term. Um, and we, we know that coming out of the interview process. Mm -hmm. But that once you're on board, we, we create this EDP together and we make sure that we, we understand what that is and then we update it on a periodic basis because the best that we can understand for our employees' perspective about what really makes them tick, uh, what really makes them hum, and frankly, what gets them the most passionate and, and aligns, and that, that alignment can change, and, and it should as you go through your career, but, but what aligns with what I, what I really want to do and what I really want to accomplish, we take that 
And then we take a look at kind of the goals of the business, right? Where are their holes? Where do we need, you know, kind of future leaders? Uh, where do we need, you know, where do we need gaps that people are going to have to be able to fill in to, to run this machine, as you say? Um, and then we, we make that alignment. Um, and it's not, you know, it, it's never perfect. Um, but the closest it gets to perfect is when both sides are being really radically candid with each other. Yeah. Um, and when on the company side, we're saying this, here's the honest to God truth about what kind of this role, this direction looks like and, and the demands it entails. And, uh, you know, and this is why I think you can, or potentially are not yet ready to do this mm -hmm. job. And then on the individual side, you know, it's a two way street. Um, you know, our colleagues have to be ready and willing to be really open and honest. Like this is, this is what I want to do. And, you know, the, the conversations that, I honestly love the most um, is when that really doesn't have a current company lens on it. When they say, you know, in five years time, I really want to go start a not-for-profit or, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. Okay. And it's like, perfect. I'm going to be really sad to lose you when that time comes, but now we know. And so we can together create this directional flow that will help get you ready for that while at the same time help us accomplish the goals of the business. That's, I mean, I love that. That's so, I'm, I'm almost, I have so many questions and things I want to say, but I just, <laughs> um, I love that because I think that so many people are afraid to say, this is my five-year goal. This is 10 years where I want to be. And I know it doesn't align with, my company's goals. And so they keep that in and they're like, Oh, I want to be a manager. I want to be a director by that point when really that's not what they want. But if you're using yeah. that as a, as an ability to not only teach them and to be able to leverage those skills in the meantime, but also prepare them to leave you, that's something you don't, you don't see a lot of. And, and I love that you guys are doing that. I love that you're offering that to, to your employees because one thing that you probably haven't thought of, but that I'm immediately thinking of is that that creates loyalty to. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And that's yeah. something that I always hear. Millennials aren't loyal employees. They're job hoppers. But if they love what they're doing and they know that you're supporting them, of course, they're going to love it and they're going to stay. That's great. Bingo. Right. <laughs> couldn't, could certainly no surprise. Couldn't have said any better myself, Amanda, but uh, that was, yeah, perfectly uh, captured. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to walk the walk with a philosophy like this. Um, and what I'm really psyched about is, you know, in, in a few weeks, we're going to celebrate our five year anniversary as a company. Um, and I, I believe that we have batted a thousand. We, we have in every single case, um, walk the walk as it relates to that, that, you know, we will work with you if you're willing to open up and kind of work with us. And, and we have never, there have never been negative consequences if someone has ever opened up and said, this is my five-year path, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so the data has proven, just think about us as an organization, that, that we have shown you can, you can open up, right? Not everybody has the courage to do that, and I get it. And sometimes we come with prior professional baggage, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and you can't stop that, but all we can do is, you know, obviously try to create the right culture and, and environment ourselves. Um, and then my hope is that everybody sees that, hey, this is actually a really great way to get people to buy in, to be a part of the team, to remain loyal, but also, you know, create that goodwill and help them get to that next stage of their career, whether it's within this company or not. And so that they then go forth and become the leaders that we all hope they'll be. This is, this is an amazing and beautiful conversation and, and it's, I'm sad that it's almost over and I don't even know if there's so many other things I want to ask about. So, all right, we've touched on this a little bit, but let's be very specific here. If you had a early in career employee come to you um, and I don't know, are they staying, are they going? I don't know, it's up to you. Um, what would be the one piece, number one piece of advice that you would give them? An early in their career employee. Early in their career. So they've been in the workforce full-time less than five years. Okay. 
Um, so the advice that I would give to them is, and this is, I'm kind of thinking back about my own path, um, is that have a plan, right? Have a plan and work. I mean, I mean, give your all to mm -hmm. that plan, right? right? Give your all that plan and give that all, give, give your all to whatever it is that you're doing. And you have to do it every single day, right? Yeah. You really can't you can't take days off. Don't get me wrong. You need to take days to sharpen your ax. I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. but when you come to work or when you're following that plan, you gotta, you know, you gotta suit up and show up every single day when you're doing that uh, and be purposeful about it. Um, because that's what kind of builds the right habits to get there and have that plan. But yet don't be so headstrong and, uh, uh, you know, heads down about that plan mm -hmm. that you miss the incredible opportunities and promises as they come. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, if my own career path is, is any sort of example, there have been, a, there have been a, several instances along the way where um, opportunities were presented. And if I hadn't been paying attention and if I hadn't been willing to take the leap, um, you know, just like kind of this current, you know, organization that, that I'm running today, um, it would have been a very different path. I'm sure it would have been great, but you know, you gotta be willing to take that plunge when the opportunities come. That's great advice. Very solid. All right. One last question. This is, uh, something I'm asking all of the leaders. What is your favorite leadership book? My favorite leadership book. Mm -hmm. And that's tough to only name one, <laughs> but I, I think it's probably the five dysfunctions of the team. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you pulled it off the shelf. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, yeah, it, it is just, it is so quick. It is so simple. It, it is so well written. Um, and it, it, those lessons you just, you just, you, you can take with you time and time and time again. It just came up in conversation with some of my executive team yesterday. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, um, this is actually the field guide. So if you haven't gotten that, you should try that one out too. <laughs> God, I'm right. Down. Um, well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ben, for being on the show. Thank you for sharing and being honest and, and really sharing with the world about how awesome the culture is at Velocity Global, but also about what you guys are building. I think that that's really amazing and important. And so thank you for sharing with us. Well, thank you. It's an honor. And we're hiring. So come check it out. Velocity All right. All right. We will include <laughs> a link to uh, the hiring page for Velocity Global, which obviously I think is a pretty awesome place to be if you make it through the cuts. So thank you again. <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of The Next Generation Rockstars, where we have discussed all about recruiting and retaining that next generation of talent. So I'm guessing that you probably learned a tremendous amount from this week's Rockstar Leader. And if that is the case, don't keep me a secret. Share this episode with the world but really share it with your friends, with your colleagues, because they also need to learn how to recruit and retain this next generation of talent, because these skills are crucial to business success moving forward. Now, of course, I want you to keep up to date every single week as we are dropping each and every episode. So be sure to subscribe to your favorite podcast platform of your choice and you will see the next generation rock stars show up just for you.